hello to Mrs. Burke, Miss Garino, Mrs. Hazel, and Mrs. Roman's class. Continuing to read from R.J. Palacio's Wonder. Um, this is read with permission of the author and publisher. We are starting on page 170, The War. It was Charlotte who had the inside scoop on why everyone was dissing me. I found a note inside my locker at the end of the day. Meet me in room 301 right after school. Come by yourself, Charlotte. She was already inside the room when I walked in. Sup, I said. Hey, she said. She went over to the door, looked left and right, and then closed the door and locked it from the inside. Then she turned to face me and started biting her nail as she talked. Look, I feel bad about what's going on, and I just wanted to tell you what I know. Promise you won't tell anyone I talk to you. Promise. So Julian had this huge holiday party over winter break, she said. I mean huge. My sister's friend had had her sweet 16 at the same place last year. There were like 200 people there. So, I mean, it's a huge place. Yeah, and? Yeah, and well, pretty much everyone in the whole grade was there. Not everybody, I joked. Right, not everybody. Duh. Like, even parents were there, you know. Like, my parents were there. You know, Julian's mom is the vice president of the school board, right? So, she knows a lot of people. Anyway, so basically what happened at the party was that Julian went around telling everyone that you punched him because you had emotional problems. What? And that you would have gotten expelled, but his parents begged the school not to expel you. What? And that none of that would have happened in the first place if Tushman hadn't forced you to be friends with Augie. He said his mom thinks that you, quote unquote, snapped under the pressure. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. No one bought that, right? I said. She shrugged. That's not even the point. The point is, he's really popular. And you know, my mom heard that his mom is actually pushing the school to review Augie's application to Beecher she do that? It's about Beecher not being an inclusive school. That, that's a type of school that mixes normal kids with kids with special needs. That's just stupid. Augie doesn't have special needs. Yeah, but she's saying that if the school is changing that way, they usually do things in some ways. But they're not changing anything. Yeah, they did. Did you notice they changed the theme of this year's art show? In past, fifth graders painted self-portraits, but this year they made us do these ridiculous self-portraits as animals, remember? So big freaking deal. I know, I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying that that's what she's saying. I know, I know. It's just so messed up. I know. Anyway, Julian said that he thinks being friends with Augie is bringing you down and that for your own good, you need to stop hanging out with him so much. And if you start losing all your old friends, it'll be like a wake-up call. So basically, for your own good, he's going to stop being your friend completely. Newsflash, I stopped being his friend completely first. Yeah, but he's convinced all the boys to stop being your friend for your own good. That's why nobody's talking to you. They're talking. You're talking to me. Yeah, well, this is more of a boy thing, she exclaimed. The bo girls are staying neutral, except Savannah's group, because they're going out with Julian's group. But to everyone else, this is really a boy war. I nodded. She tilted her head to one side and pouted like she felt sorry for me. Is it okay that I told you all of this, she said? Yeah, of course. I don't care who talks to me or not. I lied. Because this is just so dumb. She nodded. Hey, does Augie know any of this? Of course not. At least not from me. And Summer? I don't think so. Look, I better go. Just so you know, my mom thinks Julian's mom is a total idiot. She said she thinks people like her are more concerned about what their kids' class pictures look like than doing the right thing. You heard about the photoshopping, right? Yeah, that was sick. Totally, she answered, nodding. Anyway, I better go. I just wanted you to know what was up and stuff. Thanks, Charlotte. I'll let you know if I hear anything else, she said. Before she went out, she looked left and right outside the door to make sure no one saw her leaving. I guess even though she was neutral, she didn't want to be seen with me. Switching tables. The next day at lunch, stupid me, I sat down at a table with Tristan, Nino, and Pablo. I thought maybe they were safe because they weren't com really considered popular, but they weren't out there playing DD at recess either. They were sort of in-betweeners, and at first I thought I scored because they basically, they were basically too nice to n acknowledge my presence when I walked over to the table. They all said, hey, uh, though I could tell they looked at each other. But then the same thing happened that happened yesterday. Our lunch table was called, they got their food, and headed toward a new table at the other side of the cafeteria. Unfortunately, Mrs. G, who was the lunch teacher that day, saw what happened and chased after them. That's not allowed, boys, she scolded them loudly. This is not that kind of a school. You better get back to that table. Oh, great. Now that was going to help. 
Before they could be forced to sit back down at the table, I got up with my tray and walked away really fast. I could hear Mrs. G call my name, but I pretended not to hear and just kept walking to the other side of the cafeteria behind the lunch counter. Sit with us, Jack. It was summer. She and August were sitting at their table, and they were both waving me over. Why didn't I sit with August the first day of school? Okay, I'm a total hypocrite. I know. That very first day of school, I remembered seeing August in the cafeteria. Everybody was looking at him, talking about him. Back then, no one was used to his face or even knew what, that he was coming to Beecher. So it was a total shocker for a lot of people to see him there on the first day of school. Most kids were even afraid to get near him. So when I saw him going into the cafeteria ahead of me, I knew he'd have no one to sit with, but I just couldn't bring myself to sit with him. I'd been hanging out with him all morning long because we had so many classes together, and I guess I was just kind of wanting a little normal time to chill with other kids. So when I saw him move to a table on the other side of the lunch counter, I purposely found a table as far away from there as I could. I sat down with Isaiah and Luca, even though I'd never met them before, and we talked about baseball the whole time, and I played basketball with them at recess. They became my lunch table from then on. I heard Summer had sat down with August, which surprised me because I knew for a fact she wasn't one of the kids that Mr. Tushman had talked into being friends with Augie. So I knew she was just doing it just to be nice, and that was brave, I thought. So now here I was sitting with Summer and August, and they were being totally nice to me as always. I filled them in about everything Charlotte had told me, except for the whole big part about my having snapped under the pressure of being Augie's friends or the part about Julian's mom saying Augie had special needs, or the part about the school board. I guess all I really told them was how Julian had this huge holiday party and managed to turn the whole grade against me. It just feels so weird, I said, to not have people talking to you, pretending you don't even exist. Augie started smiling. You think, he said sarcastically, welcome to my world. So here are the official sides. The name of this chapter is Sides said Summer at lunch the next day. She pulled out a folded piece of loose leaf paper and opened it. It had three columns of names. Jack's side. Jack, August, Reed, Max G, Max W. Julian's side. Miles, Henry, Amos, Simon, Tristan, Pablo, Nina, Nino, Isaiah, Luca, Jake, Totland, Roman, Ben, Emmanuel, Zeke, Tommaso. Neutrals. Malik, Remo, Jose, Leaf, Ram, Ivan, Russell. Where'd you get this? said Augie, looking over my shoulder as I read the list. Charlotte made it. Summer answered quickly. She gave it to me last period. She said she thought you should know who was on your side, Jack. Yeah, I, not many people, that's for sure, I said. Reed is, she said, and the two Maxes. Great, the nerds are on my side. Don't be mean, said Summer. I think Charlotte likes you, by the way. Yeah, I know. Are you going to ask her out? Are you kidding? I can't now that everyone's acting like I have the plague. The second I said it, I realized I shouldn't have said it. There was an awkward moment of silence. I looked at Augie. It's okay, he said. I knew about that. Sorry, dude. I didn't know they called it the plague, though, he said. I figured they called it like the cheese touch or something. Oh, yeah, like in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I nodded. The plague actually sounds cooler, he joked, like someone who would catch the death of the ugliness. And he said this, he made air quotes. I think it's awful, said Summer, but Augie shrugged while taking a big sip from his juice box. Anyway, I'm not asking Charlotte out, I said. My mom thinks we're all too young to be dating anyway, she answered. What if Reed asked you out? I said, would you go? I could tell she was surprised. No, she said. I'm just asking, I laughed. She shook her head and smiled. Why? What do you know? Nothing. I'm just asking, I said. I actually agree with my mom, she said. I do think we're too young to be dating. I mean, I just don't see what the rush is. Yeah, I agree, said August. Which is kind of a shame, you know? What with all these babes who keep throwing themselves at me and stuff. He said this in such a sun funny way that the milk I was drinking came out my nose when I laughed, which made us all totally crack up. We'll continue reading Wonder in a few days.